Hello folks and welcome to another Legend Scale review. Today we are taking a look at Transform Elements TEMM001 Black Widow, which was their first venture into the Legend Scale scene. Now as you can probably tell, this is meant to be a miniature version of Black Arachnia as she appeared in the Beast Wars TV series. Now I'm no expert on Beast Wars, but I can confidently say that this robot mode really does look the part. It's well proportioned, and I think they've done a really good job of recreating how that CGI model looked. The shiny metallic colours really do pop, and uh, there are plenty of little moulded details in certain places. Some plastic, like the chest and perhaps the claws, is done in a more rubbery type. And I could swear there's some die cast in here. Uh, maybe the lower legs and the back, uh, although I can't be certain. She definitely does feel heavier than she should be if she's just plastic. Now these spider legs are scarily thin, only about 2mm in diameter, and each four on either side here are just all one piece. Now, when I first got her, I thought it would only be a matter of time before one of these snapped, given how thin they are, but I've had her for over a year now, and she's been dropped more than her fair share of times, and no breakages. So there you have it. Now, I can't say the same for the durability of the paint. It has chipped in a couple of places on mine. If you're not as clumsy as me, you'll probably not have a problem with it, but there's certain places, like the uh, handle of the gun there, and the insides of certain joints that it will just be unavoidable because there are two surfaces in contact with each other. In terms of articulation, the head is on a ball joint with a lot of upward range. The shoulders are on a hinge and a ball joint. And the little shoulder pad rotates with the rest of the arm. Ball joint at the elbow. Unfortunately, no waist swivel. Lots of forward and backward motion on the hip ball joints, even more so if you rotate that crotch panel accordingly, uh, but then not quite as much to the sides. There appears to be a thigh rotation there, but I haven't been able to make it budge without popping the leg off the ball joint, and it's a bit redundant anyway. A double hinge knee, you love to see it. There is a rather painful looking joint in the middle of her shin, although that's for the transformation. And then the front sections of each foot are on a hinge. Now, the articulation is decent enough for a legend scale figure, but honestly, the lack of a waist swivel does disappoint me a wee bit. Uh, I think it could have done a lot to make her look less stiff when posing. Moving on to accessories, the first one we have here is her distinctive crossbow blaster, which uh, can be wielded in either hand using this peg on the underside. And as I mentioned before, you're probably not going to be able to avoid paint wear on that handle. I, this happened within about a week of me having her. And what you can always do is just touch it up with some black paint yourself if that bothers you, but I don't think it's a huge deal. Then we also have these elliptical panels with some nice cobweb detailing on the inside. And what these are essentially is removable kibble. Uh, they form the sides of the spider abdomen. And what you can do is you can remove them for the robot mode for this sleeker, more shoe accurate look, or you can do what I do and tab them into either thigh to avoid parts forming, uh, if that's what you want to do, or if you just like your spiders dummy thick. It kind of reminds me of the Transformers animated version of Black Arachne, which had the spider abdomen hanging down from the back of the waist. And then the last accessories are these two interchangeable crotch panels, uh, one for the robot mode and one for the spider mode. Now this is intended so that you can have shoe accuracy in both modes, but I don't really think it was necessary. Uh, I think a better use of this space would have been to put a waist swivel in, but maybe that's just me. And then before we get to the transformation, we'll do some size comparisons. Black Rightna is about eight and a half centimeters tall, and here she is with some fellow femmes. We've got Iron Factory RC and Slipstream. There she is with Kingdom Vertebrake and our Universal Constant Runabout. There she is with some other Legend Scale Beast Wars figures. There she is with Animated Black Arachnia and Kingdom Black Arachnia. And as always, the Lego Stormtrooper. 
Before we start the transformation, I'm just going to set our blaster off to the side. And then you can transform her with the thigh panels attached, but uh, I'm going to set those to the side too, just so you can see what I'm doing a little better. Step 1. Yeah, I'm not going to make a joke about those. Rotate our head around and lift up the arms. Split the torso. Close up her feet and then break her shins. Push the head in a little and then bring the legs up alongside it. Now you'll want to use both of the knee joints to bend the lower leg around into this position. Bring back the blaster and separate it into two pieces. This piece with the R glass on it has a little notch that rests on the pelvis like this and then tabs on either side that slot into the legs and hold everything together just like this. Now you can bring back the thigh panels and these have a little notch that fits around the calf and that will allow you to line up the tab with the slot in the thigh like so. Putting the abdomen section together can be tricky the first couple of times so uh, you just need to make sure everything's lined up uh, correctly. You can kind of tell if the legs are the right shape if the thigh panel nicely covers all the parts including the feet because uh, if you don't have this lined up it can be very fiddly and frustrating to put together. Flip out the spider head and then you may need a small tool to flip out the fangs uh, although I find that the other piece of the crossbow is perfect for this. So you can just hook it in under there and there you go. Rotate the robot mode arms under the body on that uh, joint with the screw so that they sit under the abdomen nicely. Then the final thing to do is to take the other piece of the crossbow, rotate it around like this and then that will clip on to the neck of the uh, spider. Just like that. So here we have the spider mode, and a very good spider mode at that. It's well proportioned, it stays together nicely, and most importantly it doesn't have any unsightly robot mode parts sticking out in weird places. Uh, to be fair, you do have the obvious head and claws at the back there, uh, but I definitely prefer that over the robot mode knees sticking out of the front of the abdomen, like in the Kingdom and MP versions. Uh, now if you're a stickler for show accuracy, you can swap this crotch panel out for the other plain black one. Although I don't really think this is necessary. Uh, it's just not worth hoping through the parts box for every time for me. Articulation in this mode is limited, but you do get some uh, slight tilt at the head there. And then the legs can move up and down as a set of four on each side. For a couple more size comparisons, uh, here she is with runabout and vertebrae again. There she is with the other black rachnias again. And out of these three, I do actually think the transform element has the best spider mode, uh, definitely in terms of kibble management at the very least. There she is with transform element rap trap. And of course the Lego Stormtrooper. So that's transform element Black Widow. A nice little figure all round. Uh, the fact that the parts forming is entirely optional is great. Uh, you might think the price point is a little much for its size, but I think you definitely get what you pay for here. The lack of a waist swivel might be a deal breaker for some people, uh, but I can personally let it slide for now. Although that does seem to be a bit of a theme with this line. Rat Trap doesn't have a waist swivel, and I don't think Scorponok does either. Uh, so I hope they figure out how to put one in by the next release. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, feel free to check out Ape's Scorponok review and uh, some of the other stuff on the channel if you enjoyed. And goodbye.